I've got a pair of vintage LA3A optical compressors on my bench this week that I'm checking out for a client. Thought it'd be a good time to give you guys a little tour through it, show you how it works and what gives it its unique character. One of the first things you'll notice when you're dealing with a true vintage optical style compressor is there's no attack, release, or ratio controls. I'm going to show you why that is. What makes LA3As different from other compressors is they're very simple. In the center of the LA3A, you're going to see that there's one key component. That's the T4B optical attenuator. Inside this T4B is where the magic happens. The T4B is made up of two components. The first one is a photocell, also called a light-dependent resistor. This light-dependent resistor does exactly what its name implies. It changes resistance value based on exposure to light. This component is responsible for the audio compression, the changing of the level of your audio signal. There's two of them in a T4B because one is used to control your level, your audio level, and the second one is used to control the gain reduction meter to show how much you're compressing. So if we take this photo cell and add another resistor, we now have a voltage divider. This is exactly the same thing as a fader or a level control on a console. But what we need is a light source to strike this photo cell to change the level. An incandescent bulb is too slow. It won't work. When the T4B was designed originally for the LA-2A compressor in the early 60s, LEDs were not yet commercially available. So what they used was something pretty clever. It's electroluminescent panel. At that time, they were used to light the dials and switches in airplane cockpits, but today you can get them in something as common as a bathroom nightlight. Electroluminescent panels run on a medium to high AC voltage, and that's good. So we can take our audio signal and just amplify it and drive it directly into this light. So our peak reduction control on our compressor is really just a gain control for an amplifier that's changing the brightness of this panel. The brighter the panel gets, the more the resistance changes in the photocell, and that reduces the gain of our audio. Now that would all be fine and well, except for the fact that photocells were not designed for audio applications. They're designed for light meters or to ring a bell when you walk in a shop and break a light beam or turn on a light on a street lamp at night. So in this application, they have some interesting characteristics. If we look at the manual, you see that the attack time is 1.5 milliseconds or less, depending on the degree of limiting, and the release time is 0.06 or 60 milliseconds for 50% release, or from 0.5 to 5 seconds for complete release, depending on the previous reduction. If you think of going out in the bright sunlight and then coming into a dark room, it takes a few seconds for your eyes to adjust. The photo cell on this limiter is kind of the same thing. If you hit it really hard, it's going to take it a very long time to release. Looking at the URI gain reduction plot, you can see that for the first 10 dB of gain reduction, it's kind of a soft knee, over easy type compressor, but then it changes drastically to a limiter. So this compressor is a good one to fool around with an experiment because depending on how hard you hit it and what the program material is, the attack and release times are going to change and actually the ratio is going to change. Also, I don't take the limit compress switch quite literally on these compressors because it seems to be more shifting the range that you're operating in. Uh, more so than being a literal change from, let's say, a 3 to 1 ratio or a 10 to 1 ratio. That said, these compressors do manage to be very musical. The signal comes in first to the input transformer. From there, it travels to your peak reduction control. Now, this control drives the amplifier that drives the light in the T4B. So I happen to own a spare T4B. This is a Yuri, old Yuri one. I think it was rebuilt at one point by uh, Anthony DeMaria Labs. I'm not sure. The date code on the electroluminescence panel is 86, which is pretty late. But uh, we'll take a look inside and you can see 
how this works. So this side of the T4B, and this is the back of the electroluminescent panel. This is the panel that glows brightly when uh, a voltage is applied to it. And on the other side are the two photoresistors. And uh, one of them is for gain reduction of the audio, and one of them is for gain reduction of the meter. So I'm gonna put this in, and I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm going to have to remove all the lights in this too. Electroluminescent panel seems to do an excellent job of reacting to every nuance of the music. What I'm doing here is recording tone and click through an LA3A to see what the attack and release time is on the T4B. So the attack time looks like it's about looks like it's about six milliseconds. And the release time is long. I'm gonna call it there. It looks like it's about a second and a half, and I believe I had about six dB of gain reduction on the click. That six millisecond attack time is nice because it's going to allow some of the transients of your drums to punch through. What I'm doing here is I've taken a LA3A plugin and set it for about 6 dB of gain reduction and try to match the level pretty close. And I'm going to bounce it through this plugin so we can compare the audio that I bounced through the true LA3A and the audio bounced through this plugin. So I've created this Pro Tool session with my original music track, and guys, please don't bust my chops about the music. Right now, I've got to stick with YouTube royalty-free music. So on track one, I have the original unprocessed music track. On track two, I have it printed through the LA3A compressor. And on track three, I have it printed through the Waves LA3A plugin. Keep an eye on the mutes on the left so you can see which track you're listening to. I think they both sound really good. I prefer the real compressor over the plugin. I love the way it brings up the ambience and the attack on the snare is great. The bass presence is excellent. The plugin also sounds excellent, but I think that the real compressor has a slight edge. And remember that there is some variance in the T4s and age will affect them as well. So all these vintage compressors are going to sound slightly different. Once YouTube renders out this file, I have no idea if you're going to be able to clearly hear the differences between these three samples. But I'm going to try to upload this in a full bandwidth version of this file on my Patreon website if you want to go there and have a listen.
Okay, so what are your takeaways? Well, first of all, your gain control has no effect on your compression. The peak reduction control and the T4B optical attenuator are both before the gain control. So if you're using the hardware unit in the studio, you want to be sure you're feeding it the proper level. The second thing is the ratio is dependent on how hard you're hitting the compressor. Uh, it's like an over easy compressor. When you hit it gently, it's going to act like a compressor. When you hit it hard, it's going to act like a limiter. And third, the amount of compression affects the release time. The harder you hit it, the longer you hit it hard, the slower the release time will be. If you want a faster release time, you might try compressing a little bit less. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe below. If you're feeling generous, I've got a Patreon link down there also where you can help support me in making more of these pro audio videos.